one of the bases of success in meditation is desire. The desire to do it well, the desire to get results. But you can't focus on the results, you have to focus on the causes. So right now the cause is keeping the mind with the breath, keep your awareness with the breath. Paying attention to how the breath is doing right now. When it's coming in, does it feel good? Is it too long, too short, too heavy, too light? Too fast, too slow? You can adjust things as you like. And by getting interested in this, you, you find yourself wanting to stay more and more because you begin to see that the way you breathe will have an impact on how you feel your body. And how you feel your body will have an impact on the mind. Because there's a lot to explore here. But the problem is you have other desires as well. There's going to be a battle. And this is the beginning of discernment, seeing that you've got some desires that will lead you to long-term welfare and other desires that will just lead you around by the nose without any promise about where they'll take you. So you've got to figure out which is which, and then figure out how you can want to stay with the long-term results, the ones that lead to long-term happiness. Now you can say no to the ones that lead someplace else. This is going to require some training, because the mind has been wandering around, usually based on what it feels like doing. I mean, there are times, of course, when you have work you have to do and you force yourself. But then when you don't have to force yourself, you say, well, let the mind wander as it likes. But when it wanders as it likes, sometimes it gets itself into trouble. You've got to learn how to curb your desires. You're using one desire, the desire for true happiness, to overcome other desires that want the quick fix. So there'll be a battle. And this is why we train, just like soldiers need to train in a battle. The Buddha himself would use this image a lot. The soldiers who know how to fight, the soldiers who know how to be brave in the battle. Back in those days, archers were a big part of the army. The archers had to practice again and again and again. And it was, wasn't little bow and arrows like we play with when we were children. They're huge bows. They're taller than human beings. You had to be really strong, and you had to be really quick, and you had to be really accurate. That required a lot of skill, required a lot of training. So as you're here, doing badly with your defilements and doing badly with your unskillful desires and finding that you're losing, don't get discouraged. It's a part of the training. The fact that you're putting up a fight, that means you can learn. If you don't put up a fight at all, you don't learn anything. Because when you put up a fight, you begin to say, well, these are their tricks. What can I do to get past their tricks? Then you start thinking about things, start looking at your mind from a different angle, an angle that's a lot more useful than its usual angle. So accept the fact that there is going to be a battle inside. But it's a battle with the prospect of winning. And when you win, it's not like ordinary battles in the world where you just simply create more karma. This is winning and finding a goal that really is worthwhile, a goal that's not going to change on you. So accept defeat every now and then, but would learn from your defeat. If you just give up, give in, you can't even say that you lost. Losing is better than not fighting at all. Because when you lose, if you're observant, you can learn. And come back the next time and then you can win.